All right, let's check out Mr. Echidna's ReZero analysis, the most evil Archbishop. Capella. Capella, the most evil Archbishop? Yeah, maybe. So far, there hasn't been anyone so cruel and sadistic as Capella, transforming people into bugs, insects, animals, beasts. I could believe it, yeah. This was the best episode of ReZero Season 3 by far. Capella both looks and sounds amazing this episode and witness- Yeah, the voice acting is crazy good. The way that she was shape-shifting through different forms, it honestly reminded me of when I was watching like Naruto for the first time as a kid. And Orochimaru's like fucking another like body's like coming out of his mouth. Shit reminded me of that. Goosebumps. Missing the full extent of her lust authority was absolutely terrifying. Although if I was there and she did this to me, I'll just put it this way. The city would have flooded a lot faster. I'm so yeah. happy with the adaptation they're giving Capella though. It seems like her character animation is getting most of the resources. And that's a good call good. in my opinion. Subaru's leg just can't catch a break this season. And that scene with the fly flies was one of the most disturbed no it is the most disturbing plot point in the entirety of ReZero and hmm there is something very unsettling about like the fly noises and the revelation that all the people hostages have been turned into flies is it the most unsettling that's like the most disturbing thing so far the getting eaten by the white rabbit was very gruesome that was also very disturbing that probably is still the most disturbing moment for me, though. Disturb? No, it is the most disturbing plot point in the entirety of ReZero, and Capella is by far the most evil character we've ever seen in this anime. But despite that, you can call me the Dragon Sword, because <laughs> not even Reinhardt could pull me out. Regulus just referred to- Like, why do you guys get turned on by this body figure? I, I'll never understand people's obsession with prepubescent girls that look like middle school girls. I genuinely don't understand. Don't you want like something more like Sekhmet? Don't you want something more like an actually developed like of age character body proportions? I don't get it. I, I truly don't understand it. Because not even Reinhardt could pull me out. Regulus just referred to one of his wives as number 184. I should have made a joke during the episode reaction. This shit's Shadow Garden. Bro, fucking <laughs> Shadow, you know, I don't think Shadow even knows the employee numbers, right? The, um, the upper like Shadow Garden members do know the, you know, the numbers and stuff like that. But yeah, the wives are also just all employee numbers. 184, 79. Wonder if there's going to be other notable numbers that's going to show up. Even though he only has 79 of them. And I'm no TI-84, but this math doesn't add up. Because 79 is a slot safe for Fortuna back in the day, and now it's been for Amelia, and he's had multiple hundreds of wives afterwards. Something happened to the majority of his former wives, and I don't think he's paying them alimony. Yeah, they probably was, I don't know, they probably got cut off. They got laid off. They got fired. They probably died. Who killed them? Can you make a guess? We also got a very important scene that wasn't in the light novel, showing Otto helping Reinhardt rescue Felt, which means Reinhardt is now available. We what do you mean? This was not in the novel? I don't think he's paying them alimony. We also got a very important scene that wasn't in the light novel, showing- Really? Otto saving Reinhardt and Felt here was- It's anime-only material? That's interesting. Why would they do that? Well, two things. He looked very suspicious here. Otto looked incredibly suspicious here. Showing up out of nowhere, out of the dark. It was very menacing. And I'm like, ah, what are they trying to do? Is Otto special like that? Is, is he actually Pandora? Look at the hair color. Nah, it's, it's, it's a stupid theory. But if it's anime-only content, do you think that they would reveal such a crazy thing? Like, why would they, you know, not have this in the light novel but bring it in? Maybe White Fox and Tape have some other plans at Otto and they wanted to give him this specific moment to kind of further build and foreshadow what Otto could be. Or it's just an anime only scene. It has no weight on what Otto truly is because he's just Otto and they're just Otto fan service. Otto helping Reinhardt rescue Felt, which means Reinhardt is now available. We mm -hmm. could have him fight Capella, Regulus, Gluttony, or hopefully not Sirius again because that didn't go well. We need Liliana for this. I know that Reinhardt is gonna be fucking wasted again, bro. I'm not gonna bank on the fact that Reinhardt's here and is gonna save the day. 
Mbappe would never allow that to happen. And if Reinhardt just simply saved the day, just was OP, it would be also very boring. But it's also very frustrating in how much this OP characters in this show are limited. The first time. Judging by the opening visuals, at some point Reinhardt encounters Capella, but I noticed that the city hasn't flooded here yet. Opening visuals are just fake spoilers, right? They hype you up, they show you all these scenes, Garfield fucking uppercutting the dragon. Nah, these are all just, you know, it's just for fun. It's just uh, fake uh, spoilers to kind of hype up the audience and not spoil anything at the same time. So this scene could be a red herring. Anyway, let's get right into this episode. Right after the sponsored part. Arknights is a fantasy-themed mobile strategy game with... Yo, Arknights going hard? Yo, wh what's going on? Is there is there like new event going on? Do I recognize any of these character logos? I got no fucking clue. Are people even gonna pull on a husbando, man? You never know. Plenty of there's plenty of girl coomers too that love husbandos and femboy characters. And at the end of the day, if their meta kit is OP, then they'll you know buy it all. Amia, bro, the Arc Knights anime reactions. They were honestly, like, um, the episodes were pretty good if you've seen Season 1 and Season 2. Season 3 is also announced, but hey, go give your uh, discount code. What's he doing? Download Ark Knights here! Use fucking Andy News discount code! Sorry, this is not Andy News. A kid that discount code. Get your fucking free pulls or whatever. And headhunting tickets, a limited edition skin, a new lobby scene, and more. You can also get a special Whoa. access pass allowing you to claim 200 Arundum and one emergency sanity booster every day Whoa. for 30 days. Download Ark Knights right now with my link in this video's description to try out the new operators, claim rewards, and... I feel like we should link this guy's plug here. Here. Oh, Jesus Christ! No, that's not that. I just wanted to do this part. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's not the link. Here we go. Here's the link. There's the Echidna Ark Knights fucking link. If you guys are, I don't know, fucking go click on it. Why not? Experience the new story. Thank you, Ark Knights, for sponsoring this video. Back to the so content. Capella not only has the ability to transform her own body in any way she wants, but she can even transform other people's bodies in cruel and disgusting ways. Now yes, and I think that this dragon is Garfield's stepdad. There's a little bit of a hint with the eye color and the fact that he was not even fighting against Krush. And, you know, he looked like he honestly saved Krush and Subaru as, you know, we flew out. Another thing with the transformation is the fact that the bodies. It's not just like the, um, the body changing. Like you can tell that the clothing also comes with it. I'm not sure if that's like an important detail, but you know, the clothing comes with it. I was like thinking, how the fuck did she tie herself up as a hostage as a single person? Maybe she grew extra limbs and helped herself out. Maybe she just transformed into the tied up situation. I, I don't know. And how can Capella like choose? How did she know how to turn into Amelia? Well, I'm thinking that Capella has like a similar authority as Sirius in terms of understanding people's feelings. Like Sirius is calling out if you were mad, specific people that were mad for wasting their time, right? With through authority. Capella also most likely understands what people lust for in their hearts and was able to figure out what Amelia looked like and transformed into that. Carmilla also in season two is able to kind of like understand and turn into Rem. Right? Despite never having met Rem before in season two. In any way she wants, but she can even transform other people's bodies in cruel and disgusting ways. Now, yeah. Subaru was actually. So, what, is it, what does it mean when there's two dragons here? Well, how is there two dragons? Well, there's only one dragon here, and I'm still gonna think that it's Garfield's stepdad. But the one that we saw two episodes ago at the Pink Eyes. So, what's going on there? Was Capella possessing, you know, this dragon? Or was this dragon simply inside and Capella did transform into a dragon that looks just like this and went outside? That's what I'm not really sure of. Ways. Now, Subaru was actually pretty competent this episode, grabbing a rock with his whip and smashing Capella in a different way than I want to do, unleashing an attack that could have easily insta-killed any ordinary person. But unfortunately, in ReZero, every villain is just immortal by default. Something the anime changed from the light novel was how in the novel, Capella was stepping on Krush's back here as yeah, but the fan service it's gotta be our titties. As you can see, but this episode, White Fox improved upon the source material <laughs> by giving us direct feet to boob contact. And Wonder who thought of this. 
it's just always fun to think about this. Think about like in a business meeting, important people thinking about, all right, we're going to do the adaptation of episode five, season three, guys. In this specific scene, uh, Capella is stepping on Crucius back. Does anyone have any insight on how we can make it better? And one Coomer in the room is like, flip her on her back. Let her step on that titties. That's what people want. And then people around the room is like, Subarashi. Subarashi. Amazing. That's why you get paid the big bucks. And guys, it's okay to simp for Capella. After all, she's the Archbishop of Lust. Although, whenever I see her, I feel like I'm the Archbishop of Lust. However, that doesn't change the fact that she's probably the most evil character in all of ReZero. Right? All of ReZero, huh? I mean, of all the characters that we've met so far, it doesn't really feel like there's anyone more cruel and sadistic compared to Capella, yeah. Regulus and Pandora are both very They're pretty evil, chill. And there's some season 4 characters that are gonna be pretty evil. Yo! I know this guy's design. I, 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 this, it's the old man ninja guy, right? I, I remember seeing this guy's design thinking that's fucking sick with his eyebrows. I have no clue who this is, but if you think about like... Also, look at Pandora's hair color and Oto's hair color. Just, just saying. But Regulus and Pandora, like, they're not so fucking cruel and evil like Capella. Not even close. Evil too. But the difference between them and Capella is that they do evil things for the sake of their goals. Capella's atrocities have nothing to do with her goals. And she just views everything like fucking meat scraps. And she just thinks that, I, I don't know, her entire logic was like, you know, how could you possibly say that you love, you know, these people when you saw them as insects and instinctively you felt in the bottom of your heart disgust and this now, this stupid example which is so unreasonable and the logic doesn't even make sense, of course you're going to fucking feel disgust. You fundamentally changed their entire shape, being, and everything about them, right? You could also fucking change them to something better and I, I guarantee you'd be the opposite effect, but every, you know, one of these archbishops has their stupid extreme philosophies on what their sins represents and their logics are extremely twisted and it makes a lot of sense why Capella talks like that. She only hurts people simply because she despises humanity. In some ways, Capella reminds me of Elsa. They're both sadistic murderers who take mm. pleasure in other people's suffering. They both have a method of regenerating wounds. I want them both to step on me and they have an oddly similar color scheme. As Elsa is just so much better than Capella in design. I don't get it. I'll never understand. How you think the design on the right is more attractive than on the left. Why would that be the case? Because you have a bias towards body shapes that represents prepubescent girls that haven't even hit their proper development yet. What does that say about you? Just think about that for a second. You are attracted to body shapes that represents these little girls. And you're proud of this? Everybody just spamming wood? I just don't get it! As well. In terms of evil though, Capella is on a totally different scale. In my opinion, what Capella did to these hostages is the most disturbing thing to ever happen in ReZero. The buzzing sound really did just seal the deal. It was very disturbing. Even more disturbing than the rabbit scene. Rabbits entering Subaru's body through his mouth and ass, eating I still think that the rabbit scene was more disturbing to me because I'm like thinking from the perspective of Subaru getting fucking eaten out. Just, just these rabbits just all just nibbling tiny mounts, the sounds, it was way more haunting. The fly shit, the insect stuff, it was disgusting and it was a shock. But to me personally, it's still the rabbits. Seeing him alive from the inside of his body was pretty graphic, but it doesn't even remotely compare to the absolute horror of Capella turning people into flies, literally stripping them of their humanity. Making people not people. We've heard of dehumanization tactics and wars and shit, but this is actual dehumanization. I don't think there's any form of torture worse than this, guys. And the crime of murder seems not that bad all of a sudden. What Capella did was worse than everything you saw in that worst punishments in human history video. Taking away someone's humanity and turning them into a fly is a fate worse than not only death, it's a fate worse than anything. Capella is by far the most evil character in ReZero, as well as one of the most twisted, despicable villains ever created. Yeah, I agree. So far, uh, the whole dehumanizing thing i guess echidna really places emphasis on like this whole process of like stripping away your humanity and therefore it is the most cruel thing but to me that isn't as like 
disturbing, I guess, as the graphic violence, as we've seen with the bunnies. Everyone has different parameters and specific things that they value more in what, like, disturbing or horror could be. So it's definitely disgusting, though, but to me, it's still the rabbits. Sir Enri Zero, as well as one of the most twisted, despicable villains ever created. And yet, here we are, fully erect. There's no possible way to redeem Capella after this, though. I don't care how tragic her backstory is, there's just absolutely nothing she could ever do to make me forgive her. Unless, like, she said sorry or something. I don't know, I'd probably fold immediately, to be honest. Turning into Amelia only to- Uh, Capella will probably have a really sad backstory. I don't know, you know, introduce a villain that seems irredeemable. Slap a fucking sad backstory before they die and suddenly you feel more empathetic towards them. To make me forgive her. Unless, like, she said sorry or something. I don't know, I'd probably fold immediately, to be honest. Turning into Amelia only to rip herself in half in front of Subaru was just pure insanity, and I can't stress enough how stunning the visuals and the voice- Yeah, that kind of face you'd never see from Amelia. Voice acting were this episode. The scene with Capella pouring her blood into Subaru is interesting because she says, I'm gonna find out what's- Hmm, gonna find out. Meaning, I don't know what you're going to turn into. It's almost as if this is like a random process. Or maybe it's not random. Maybe it's dependent on, like, what your soul represents. But everybody's a fly in the fucking other room. Was that just random chance? Were they all just fucking flies deep inside? Maybe the transformation into the flies is a different process compared to this, where she is just giving you her dragon-cursed blood onto people sorts of ugly meat scraps you guys will turn into. If you succumb to the curse, the outcome will be wild. Even as a novel reader, I didn't fully understand this part, but I think it implies that Capella's cursed blood is competing with Subaru's blood to try to mutate his body or something. Mm. Obviously that didn't happen, so I'm assuming Subaru's blood was the winner, and I'm starting to think that Capella's cursed blood might have been related to that mysterious disease that wiped out the royal family. Maybe. Um, for sure. I thought that uh, Krush being, you know, hinted as surpassing some sort of curse back in Trial 3 in Season 2. I thought they were doing some sort of foreshadowing here. But, um, you know, the royal family did get wiped out. And it was only them specifically. And Dragon Covenant stuff, it's blood association. Capella also is saying she got, like, dragon blood in her. Maybe she's the only one that survived out of all of them. I don't know. I like to think that maybe Cop Emirada fucked Volcanica and their secret love child is Capella and she ran away. I don't know, but this could be it. Because if you've seen my Sloth If video, then this isn't the first time you've seen Capella pouring her blood into people. I'll link that video in the description if you want to watch the whole thing, but... I can't wait for monkeys to beg for another year of saying, please, please watch these if stories like, nah, <laughs> I'm gonna wait till like the end of ReZero Season 3. You're going to have to wait another year. I'm going to backload all that shit. And when my viewership is higher than ever by then, then I'll farm this content. Basically, the author introduces a new Oni character whose village was raided just like Ram and Rem's village, and Capella shows up and pours oh. her blood into the Oni woman. The Oni ends up surviving though, and the blood grants her the ability to smell the witch's scent, which, oddly enough, Rem can also do for some reason. So the Oni could not smell the witch's scent until Capella's blood was given to that oni that's weird man but like rem could always just smell the scent though there's still something so off about who can exactly smell the witch's scent so far i mean biko was doing some of that shit too right biko rem who else ram can't even though rem can what's the difference between ram and rem well Ram is hornless. Is, is the horn related to that? No, Garfield can't smell. A lot of people misunderstood season two when Garfield says that he smelled that shit. Garfield can smell fundamentally differences in Subaru and the rest because he's like an otherworlder, I think. But the witch's scent was from Ryuzu. Ryuzu was the one that smelled the witch's scent, but a lot of people thought Garfield was the one. But there doesn't really seem to be like a pattern of behavior other than some Onis being able to smell this shit reason there's conspiracy theories that rem encountered capella when she was younger but anyway i maybe right if we're gonna go with that theory of got blood then transformed then rem as well got blood then transformed who knows i feel like the condition of subaru's leg has been getting worse every episode after yeah. capella rips it off 
I'm telling you, man, the leg getting ripped off, it's just complete parallels to Aldebrand. Al is Subaru from a different timeline. Al comes from the same place, Japan, right? Home, same hometown, whatever. You've seen a breakdown shit. He knows about Biko's nickname. He says only B Subaru can call Biko. Biko, I know all too well. Al doesn't have a left arm. Subaru now doesn't have a right leg. The tarot cards are the same. They have the same height. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like little stuff like this just gets my brain just worked up and thinking, yep, Subaru's Al. He falls from the dragon and starts drowning and bleeding to death at the same time while the city floods. And I don't think he's ever been more fucked than this exact moment right here. He's. I feel like in season two, when he just got hollowed out and eaten by the bunnies and barely got to the kiss of death, that was pretty rough too. And this situation will be very odd because I was expecting like a reset to happen for him to just die by drowning. But the post credit scene and a lot, of, a lot of other pieces are moving right now, which makes me think that Subaru is not going to die by drowning here. This run will continue. It's unconscious, missing a leg, and drowning. That's gotta be a death, right? It's one thing to lose an arm, but you really can't afford to lose a leg in uh, Unseen leg, baby. <laughs> he don't got an arm. We don't got a leg. <laughs> Another thing is that Subaru and Al, their color palette, it's not the same, right? Subaru and Satala, they're very same in the color palette of like black and this like orangish gold color. Al, he does have the poncho color that represents that, you know, orangish gold color, but the green is absent in Subaru, but anyways. He's unconscious, missing a leg, and drowning. That's gotta be a death, right? It's one thing to lose an arm, but you really can't afford to lose a leg in this anime. The way his body just ragdolls was fucking insane, and the panning shot of the city in ruins was crazy too. Yep. If this is what a priority episode looks like, then I'm really hyped for the rest of the season. Meanwhile, Sirius attacks Anastasia, who looks extremely cute this season, and Capella wraps up the episode with three additional demands. First, apparently there's a Tome of Wisdom in the city. That but that's Cap. The Tomb of Wisdom is authority of greed. There's two copies of the Tomb of Wisdom, which are perfect copies, or near perfect, which Biko and Roswell had. They're both gone. Then there's defects called Gospel. But how does Capella know this? Well, I bet that her Gospel future site shit has told her that, you know, a Tomb of Wisdom has been brought into the city. And then what does she say? Bring me the artificial spirit that's also chilling, right? Now, they could definitely have predicted through whatever means they have of future sight of, okay, Beatrice is showing up to Pristella. Beatrice is the one with the other perfect copy of the Tomb of Wisdom. Therefore, that's what they're referring to. Maybe that makes sense. But Biko is also not the only, you know, to, uh, artificial spirit. I believe Puck is as well. And the highly unlikely, but a very fun theory is that Omega is around because Omega right now is Echidna. I don't know exactly how the authority of greed is going to work in Omega as it's basically Echidna's soul within Ryuzu's body. Maybe it's the same authority. I'm not sure, but I highly doubt it's that. It's most, the most obvious answer to me right now that makes sense is their misunderstanding that Biko still has the quote-unquote Tomb of Wisdom. That could be another name for a gospel, so maybe Sirius or Regulus dropped theirs while they were fighting. I don't know. Second, she wants an artificial spirit, which is a title that only applies to Beatrice, unless Puck- Puck too, right? Is here, but I highly doubt that. What- Puck is, I thought, chilling in Amelia's crystal. Puck is just residing in, you know, the broken crystal, and the whole point was to show up to Kiritaka and and asking for powerful, like, mana crystals that Puck could reside in, right? Capella could possibly want with Beatrice, I don't know. Beatrice did have a gospel. I don't think Capella necessarily has any intentions with Beatrice, but the instructions that these archbishops have been given, right? And who is ordering them around? Probably Pandora. She probably wants whatever Beatrice has. ...that we ended up burning in season two, but maybe Capella doesn't know that, and she mm. thinks Beatrice still has it. Either exactly. way, that doesn't explain why she wants it, especially because that gospel was useless. All well, it was useless because Echidna intentionally made it useless, right? 
she's the one that basically provides these patch notes and she just said, haha, fun little social experiment, fuck you, Biako. Um, but they don't necessarily have the knowledge about that. So even though to us, we know that it's useless, to them, they may think that it's fully functional and that it's still even existing. The pages were blank. The third and final demand is simply not to interfere with Regulus and Amelia's wedding. I'm glad that a wedding is actually happening because this provides an opportunity for us to crash the wedding. And, you know, there's always that part of like, does anyone like uh, there's a part where the person kind of like asked the question, does anyone object or stuff? And it's just like, oh, for and someone shows up, just crashes the wedding. In the light novel here, Capella says she doesn't know what this third demand even means, meaning that these aren't just her demands. She's actually reading from a script that someone else gave her. Exactly. No one here is operating under their own interests. They're all united by most likely the words of the gospel, which is given by Pandora. Probably. Now, who could that be? I'm going to go with Pandora, but... And Pandora is Otto right now. Mm hmm Imagine, bro. The hair color is the same, <laughs> but Otto being honestly so sus, him not being like a variable, you know, is he just an NPC that doesn't matter? Or is he truly Pandora? I don't know. Obviously, I don't have any evidence to support that, and that's probably because Pandora erased all the evidence, like she did with Amelia's memories. It's possible that Pandora has been walking around doing shit this entire season, yeah, man, you would have never known. Pandora just taking on different forms. Maybe Pandora's among us, man. Maybe she's Otto and we never knew. And just erasing herself from everyone's memories. In fact, she could have been following right behind Subaru this entire time and we wouldn't have a clue. As for as Otto, I'm telling you, bro. The other cut content this episode, honestly, it was pretty close to a perfect adaptation and most of the cut content was trivial shit like how Capella's blood was supposed to be black instead of pink and obviously a lot of dialogue from Regulus. I like the whole pink color palette. The purple, pink, you know, blood here, I think it matches it perfectly. Black instead of pink and... She does look like a little piggy here, though, because of the nose being just ripped off. Ink and obviously a lot of dialogue from Regulus. I think they cut this to make him seem even more evil, but he explains in the novel that he isn't trying to have sex with Amelia. He's he, yeah, he just he just wants like uh, it's probably similar to like in Tower of God and the Zahad princess and their relationship with Zahad, where they're all just like super expensive fancy shoes or bags, right? They're luxury goods. They're just objectified and they're placed on display and no one can touch it, right? I, I think that like, the fact that he was like, Emilia, are you a virgin? And Emilia's like, what? No, I don't even know what a virgin is. And Regulus was like, oh, Subarashi, you're even more pure than a virgin. You don't know what a virgin is because you're a mountain girl. He's just making sure that she's still pure. And also, he wasn't the one who undressed her. That was wife number 185. Okay, so 180s. Apparently, they physically checked if Amelia was a virgin. I'm like, what the fuck is all that about? You checked her hymen, but I think that she might have done it. Other than that. Yeah, imagine A1 pictures directing this scene. We gotta do this right now. <laughs> um, Sword Art Online. What's his name? Uh, Roni and the Teeth. <laughs> Ryo's <laughs> bed scene. <laughs> Where is it, bro? Do we have it? That jump, bed jump scene. That bed jump scene is fucking crazy, dude. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> Dude, so context here is that the girls are right now chained to the bed and there's this guy who like was in a bathrobe and he takes it off and he just starts jumping. It's, it's, it's disgusting. It's absolutely horrible. But, but the fact that like, he, it's just a shock. It's so, it's so ridiculous. It's hilarious. It's even funnier to think that A1 Pictures well, like, they saved all the budget for this scene. They, the way that they, like, animate and dedicate their creepy, like, like, uh, adaptations of the creepy scenes, it's crazy. It's honestly fucking ludicrous. And an even crazier scene after this is, you know how Silpha gets done dirty, right? Leaf, sorry, Leafa gets done dirty, right? Fucking, we come back after, like, how many months of break between, like, season three and season four, I think. First episode back, someone gets graped in the most, like, 
craziest, dedicated way. The art, the... It, it, it's just mind-boggling. And that's when I truly knew that A1 Pictures, they are absolute fucking demons. 100% demons. I think this and imagine if A1 Pictures, you know, adapted an Amelia Regulus scene. ...episode actually added more than it cut. The entire scene with Otto helping Reinhardt wasn't even in the novel, and they took a lot of creative liberties with the Capella stuff too that really built upon the source material instead of cutting shit from it. I really can't glaze this episode enough. It ten was ten. absolute Kino, Aoyuki popped the fuck off, and they supported her with beautiful animation and perfect soundtracks while adapting Capella's introduction in a way that surpassed even my imagination while I was reading the novel. It was great, yeah. I always give these episodes a 10 out of 10, but what I don't tell you is that I usually give the source material an 11. Well, this episode was 12, a 12 out of 10. Out of 9. That's how. Oh, even higher, bro. 12 out of 9 is better than 12 out of 10. How good it was. Another interesting thing, you've probably. Oh, the break time. Oh, yeah. I wonder how they're going to settle this in the anime episodes because I still think that we should let White Fox uh, cook for a bit and see if they will do the Al reveal in the anime canon episodes, rather than have people reach out to the break times to understand exactly what Al could be. They heard this from novel readers a thousand times already, but they finally just revealed that Al is from Japan. Except they did it in a break time episode, yeah. which nobody fucking watches. And again- Which is so sad. Like, and you'll never, I, I, I mean, it's because it's sad and it doesn't make sense because I'm thinking from my own lens and I am not the average consumer. I'm always trying to seek out extra side stuff that could just further enhance the story. But not everyone is as sweaty as me. They just want to watch the episode and fuck off, right? But yes, the side story is a break time. You should check it out. This was supposed to be revealed in season one, but I guess at the time they didn't know if ReZero would ever get another season. And if it did, Al wasn't even going to show up again until the third season. So unfortunately, they cut most of season one's foreshadowing. Personally, I was hoping that they would just take like 20 seconds to do a flashback at some point to show us that original conversation that was cut from season one. Mm, maybe they could fucking retcon it. But I don't know why they didn't do that. I don't agree with putting such an important reveal in a break time episode because 99% of the audience doesn't watch break time. A and maybe the idea, again, my theory is that uh, maybe they wanted to provide these extra crazy Easter eggs. That's not even Easter egg. This is just an absolute fucking huge revelation in break time since no one watches break time. And this will then get, garner the interest. More people will start watching break time, gets the ratings up for that. And then they'll also do the Al revelation separately in the anime canon episodes. This is the way that I was thinking that maybe White Fox is going to approach with, but that could not be the case. A lot of you probably don't even know what break time is. I won't spoil anything, but Al becomes a very important character this season, and the next season, mm. and the next season, mm. and maybe even the season after that. Al honestly is looking like such a super important endgame character. There's so many things, if you don't even know about his constellations, like the break time episode, it's not just about that Al is a person from Japan, just like Subaru. It's not the fact that he arrived here about like 19 years ago. It's not the fact that, it, it, but it's not the fact that he even knows like Biko's like nickname. Some people, and, and you gotta think about it. How would somebody that never met Beatrice even understand Biko nickname, right? Then people are thinking, holy shit, uh, maybe Alice Subaru somehow, only Subaru would know that name, right? But then you could do a little bit of mental gymnastics and say, well, they're both Japanese. Simply adding Ko at the end of a shortened name is a very common thing to do. And one could easily say that Al is just saying Biko because he's Japanese. But the really crazy thing is how Biko says, only Subaru can call me that, I suppose. And Al ends the episode with a very ominous line saying, I know that all too well. Which, it's, it's, are you picking up what I'm putting down? There's only one thing you could really assume at that point. It's that Al is Subaru, or he knew of Subaru in a different timeline along with Biko, but most likely Al could be Subaru. If you look at the constellation, Aldebran points to Subaru, Pleiades. Al is a follower of Subaru. Al is the same height as Subaru. Al has no left arm. Subaru has no right leg in this current timeline, just other little meme shit to kind of point the parallels. The tarot cards they share are also the same. And the craziest, craziest shit is 
the side story of Al, the title, one of the three stories, the title, I believe it's called The Day That Al Stopped Following the Stars or something, which kind of hints that the one following Pleiades, Aldebaran to Pleiades, Al to Subaru, that connection is lost in the future, which hints at the possibility that Aldebaran could be an antagonist that goes against Subaru. This Kyodai that we have right now could be set up like that. That is the craziest shit happening, but obviously a lot of the anime onlys, they are not as sweaty or trying to look for these little... Like, 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 you have to first go out of your way to understand the constellation. You'd have to go out of the way to understand even that these titles of these side stories even existed, right? Like, there's so many different things happening. I love that Al is such a significant character, but the way that they're not really setting up properly to be foreshadowed, that, that's a bit of an L. That. So yeah, cut content can be annoying sometimes, but it is what it is. My name is Echidna Chansama, and I hope you worthless meat sa- <laughs> Chansama, good one. Thank you, Mr. Echidna, <clears throat> for the review analysis, please. Please go give the video a like. Here's the link. Check out his channel. And you know what I realized? A lot of people seem to also just slap on reaction on their title, thinking that if you say reaction, like it's gonna like show up to more people because people are searching up reaction. That is not the case. Otaku Spirit does that shit too a lot. Motherfucker just reviewing an analysis. Like it's not a big deal. It's just. Funny that I saw that a lot of people's channel that don't even do reactions are slapping the keyword reaction in their titles. But an actual reaction channel like mine, I don't even do it because I know that the YouTube search engine and shit like that, no one actually uses to seek it out. But anyways, it's just little silly details. Please go check out Mr. Echidna's channel. I'll see you next time.